here today with Oli Moritzen, uh, author of Seaweeds, Edible, Sustainable and Available. I'm thrilled to have him here with us today out on the coast. It's a great thrill to be here because we don't, where I come from in Denmark, we don't have coastlines like this with a good nice tide and we're here at low tide so there are a lot of things to pick which we usually don't see if the water doesn't move much. And I already see there's some nice sea lettuce here mm -hmm. and I hope we can go out a little bit further to pick some of the fresh ones. I, I really love sea lettuce. Yeah, I remember when uh, when I was out visiting in Copenhagen, uh, everybody had to go get their snorkel gear on to yeah, go you out have to, and you harvest have to dive. the seaweeds. Yeah, yeah. But here you can just walk out and get it. So yeah. I can see it from here. You have a lot of a lot of green, and I guess we're going to see some of the red as well. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. And it's such a nice day. So we found some some green here, but there's actually some that is supposed to be red. It's a red algae. It's one of my favorites, and most people don't really know that they eat it quite often because it's what you get when you eat sushi. It's a red algae. It's, a, it's brown here. It has different colors depend on, depending on where, where it actually grows. And it, I find this is fascinating organism because I can actually I can see you through it. It's just one layer, cell layer, uh, thin and still it's very flexible and very very tough so strong this is eaten in europe there's a tradition for eating this in europe you you cook it in wales to make what is called lava bread but you have to cook it for a long time but 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 lava bread is actually just a mush it's kind of a paste of, of the nora you cook it with a bit of salt and it's surprising that even if so i mean it's so tough you have to cook it for three or four hours with a bit of salt and then you have something you can spread on uh, maybe on bread but in, in Wales you would eat it just uh, together with bacon in the morning and just a regular breakfast and that's the lava cakes is it it's a lava, lava cake or lava bread they call it okay. which is not a bread it's really just a paste oh and then right. you, you put it on the frying pan together with the, with the bacon and sausages okay. for, for breakfast but of course the most delicate way of getting it is in the Japanese way uh, making it into nori and I, I know you tried to make nori haven't you well we did try to make uh, nori sheets to make our own su yeah. sushi and we weren't yeah. quite successful but we're we were successful at, at creating nori jerky but yeah. we, we didn't make okay. the sheets but I guess the nori jerky is really something that belongs to this area the, the northwest coast Indian the, the First Nation people they use this to, to sort of the way to store it it was the one seaweed that they would bring inland for trade. So, and I and I believe a, a lot of the way food was stored in the First Nations culture was through drying it in thick cake form, okay, similar yes. to um, salal berries. You can also make nori with other seaweeds, but this is the best because it's the most um, it's the most tender, and it's also the one that you can actually make it very crisp when you dry it and, mm. and roast it. The right amount. So, uh, I guess there's a reason why people call it uh, sea lettuce because it well, looks like lettuce and you can cut it up freshly and put it in your in your salads. It's such a beautiful vibrant green color. And you mentioned that you, you can use this in bread not as lava bread but just as bits and pieces in bread. This is We use this always when we bake at home. Put it in bread, to, uh, dry it and chop it up and then maybe together with a few other seaweed pieces. It gives uh, beautiful little colors uh, and spots. Uh, but it's also a good way of replacing salt mm. in your bread. I mean, bread without salt is not good bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you need salt, and you can use the salt from the seaweeds, both from the green and, and the red, and maybe we'll find some brown ones. And um, seaweeds are high in potassium salts, so it has an advantage over sodium salts, which is usually, well, the problem uh, that we get too much sodium. Mm -hmm. So you can replace a good part of the salt in, in bread by just a mixture of granulated dried seaweeds of different kinds. I don't know if you have ever had smoked adults? No, I haven't. It's, it's wonderful. Ah. I mean, you could smoke, smoke it and then you could fry it mm -hmm. and then it really tastes like bacon. Oh, right, yeah. which is so one of the big... One of the big things in the media these days, yeah. isn't it? That seaweed bacon. You should try to smoke it. And, and apple wood, we can get sort of some apple wood and smoke it. You yeah. have to dry it first and then smoke it for, for well, several hours. Mm -hmm. Except smoke very well. And then if you rehydrate it a little bit again, such that it's, it's sort of a little bit um, um, soft. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like tobacco. It smells like tobacco, and it has mm -hmm. a very nice texture when you. So it's you cured buy it. in a sense. It's, it, it is cured, yeah. and if you store it for for a while, when it has some um, uh, uh, humidity, 
the enzymes will keep chewing on it and it will become more and more tender and more and more soft. So this is um, a smaller species and they, they can become quite big. In Latin they call called Palmaria palmata and um, it comes from the Latin of the, of the palm. Mm. So, so a big piece would look like a piece of, or like a, like a hand with fingers. Mention a dish um, and I'll tell you how to use dolls. <laughs> What I understand is that because seaweeds are dried in the sun, part of the reason is that it converts the phenols into tannins, yes. which, which enhances the flavor profile. Yeah, so, bitter. Yeah, so I mean, I enjoy it in every way. When I have the opportunity to use the sea lettuce, for example, fresh in my salads, I'll, I go for it. But generally, I go and I'll harvest and I'll dry it out. And I really like seaweeds fried. Yeah. Um, you know, making chips out of it. Yes, it's quite yes. simple and use it with a little oil. And my kids really like it that mm. way too. You know, I just sprinkle it in everything. Fresh, dried, fermented. I think it's really important to have a variety of, of all different ways yeah. to, to benefit from all the nutrients. Those of us who are not as lucky as you to be next to beaches like this, we would get the freshest seaweeds by purchasing from harvesters that have, have picked it fresh date and dry it on site. Mm -hmm. And usually I would claim that's the freshest seaweed you can get unless you go to the beach. Yeah. And yeah. I, I have this constant fight with the chefs. I, I work a lot with chefs. And chef has this um, dogma that things have to be fresh. And that's because they think of, of freshness in context of particular vegetables. Mm -hmm. And the big difference between a fresh vegetable and a dry vegetable. But when it comes to seaweeds, if we dry this here, and save it and conserve it, it can keep for months. Mm -hmm. You put it in water again, it reconstitu reconstitutes and it looks and tastes and smells exactly the same way as the first seaweed. And this is very different from taking a dried tomato. <laughs> Yeah. If you dry tomato and put it back in water, it would not look like a fresh tomato. Mm. But I would claim, after drying this and putting it in water, it would have to be a biologist to tell it's not alive. Uh -huh. And that's because this is a, these are very simple organisms. They're basically just a bunch of cells that are glued together by the same these polysaccharides we mentioned before that will keep the skin moist. And um, each cell basically takes care of its own provision. It takes the nutrients from water and it grows and it shares space with, the, with the, the other cells. But it's not a differentiated structure. There are no capillaries. There are no, in this case, there's not even any stems. So it's basically just a lump of cells that keeps together. And, uh, and when they lose the water, they shrink and are conserved. And then put in the water, they take the water back. So it's, it's a marvelous organism. And it's beautiful to observe when you reconstitute it in water. It's, you literally feel like it's coming back to life. It, yeah, it does. And some of the, these little ones, I mean, when they dry and there's just a little crumple and you put them there, they sort of, they move. Mm. Just the elegant, mm. it's like a ballet. Mm. Kind of like if you can imagine how hair kind of swirls in the water, similarly yeah, yeah. with seaweeds do. There are a number of cookbooks, and the book I wrote it actually has quite a number of recipes. Mm. Sort of show, actually showing or demonstrating what I told you, you can use seaweeds for any kind of dish, from the very simple daily kitchen into some high, high cuisine. And basically take advantage of the fact that these organisms have all these very special, unique features uh, in contact with water. Mm. And when it comes, I mean, to me, as a, I'm a scientist, cooking is all a matter about Removing water and adding water. That's mm. basically what the kitchen is about. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when you prepare food and cooking, it's really changing the relation between water and whatever you cook. What I find fascinating with, with seaweeds is that they don't have roots. I mean, they have a hole fast. Uh, and so they don't, they don't get the nutrients from, from the soil. They get it from the water around them. So the only thing they really have to do is to stand still. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the strategy they use for, for feeding is that you let the food pass by. Some seaweeds really prefer to be in, in very sort of um, violent, turbulent waters because then you constantly get fresh nutrients. And that's also why you should not uh, pick seaweeds that are caught loose because Usually they will quite quickly die, mm -hmm. so um, you may pick them after a storm, but you should not pick what else is is on um, on the foreshore, unless here your low tide it, you can see it's still attached to the to the stones, and when the water comes in they will stand still and then 
the food will will pass by. Mm -hmm. There's one, uh, the sea palm or the pastelsia, which is amazing to observe oh, on yes, the wild yes. coast because the way those waves just slam it down and right. it stands up over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah. It's just got such incredible life force. It's it does, beautiful yes. to yes. observe. So the fact that, that you have these different colors really reflect that, that seaweeds they have the a common thing with plants is that they have uh, chlorophyll because they harvest sunlight and, and, and for some of the seaweeds the chlorophyll is very prominent so that will be the main color but there will be other colors behind hidden behind the green and say if you take the brown ones they have a lot of pigments that are sort of brownish and yellowish and they hide the, the, the green of the chlorophyll but if you if you uh, degrade the um, the brown the colors by putting the seaweed in boiling water, um, they they change the, the color and then the green comes forward. Mm -hmm. So that's why when we blanch the brown seaweeds, they go green. So it's interesting. It's sort of the opposite as you see when in the fall, when when plants. And mind you, seaweeds are not plants, they are algae, but the plants also have uh, chlorophyll to have a sunlight. And that's the prominent uh, color um, um, in the summer when there's a lot of light. But in the fall, the, uh, the chlorophyll decays and then the other pigments come forward. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, they turn, we say the, the, the leaves, they, they change. Um, and it's because the other pigment, the color of the other pigments come forward and then the, 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 the chlorophyll is, is sort of really wiped out. Well, and a lot of the therapy or, or nutrients can be found in, in those exact pigments. That's so right, in the yes. browns, for example, the fucosanthin, it's a brown-yellow carotenoid that's found and yeah. it's got all kinds of, of gifts, but um, the fucosanthin especially, it, it flushes fat and it really helps to treat fatty liver, which is a, a huge issue with the modern um, Western diet these days. So seaweeds can really help enhance our health. Not only are they highly nutritious, but they can actually help us regenerate our bodies. Where I come from, we have a lot of bladder rag, or we see the bladder rag or fucus because it's always in it's sort of a, the foreshore and sort of intertidal zone. And um, I, I use this from, for salad, take the freshest uh, tips here and cut them off uh, and, and blanch them and they go green again. And then um, uh, you can use them in the salad and they're quite interesting because they're crunchy. Mm. And that's one aspect of seaweed flavor that the, Asi that the Asians really like. And I think that's why eating seaweeds in, in the Asian countries, in particular in, in Japan and Korea and China, is that, that the uh, people there, they appreciate mouthfeel. That is, that has a certain texture, it feels a certain way with, when you get it in, in your mouth. And this is crisp. And you can, I can eat it with my ears. I hear, the, I hear it in my ears. And this is a very important aspect of, of eating and enjoying food. So these are very good to provide texture. They don't have much flavor because after blanching, most of the salt disappears. And have one. Mm, thank you. And, um, and um, mm. they get very crisp and crunchy mm -hmm. after blanching. And they look beautiful. So my one of my favorite very simple salads to make is just um, take avocado and love avocados mm -hmm. <laughs> and avocados are very soft and they have a nice texture but if you add something crunchy to the avocado for instance in terms of, of the blanched uh, tips of, of, of fucus it's a great very simple salad a nice combination yeah and, I... made, yeah, and then may put a little bit soy sauce or mm. consu on top and then you have a simpler salad you can make it takes no time um, and that you can eat with your ears yeah that's where it can be really fun, is it, uh, it, dev it doesn't get boring, as you said. There's so many which ways that you can prepare it.